After owning and printing on the H2D for over a month, I've discovered an issue. The updated toolhead design did improve many things, but what about cooling and overhangs? Let's dive right in and find out if the H2D's cooling performance is as good, worse, or better than the previous flagship, the X1 Carbon. First, I wanna tell you exactly how I came across this issue with my H2D. One of the first designs I made and started selling was a monitor adapter for the Samsung M80B Smart Monitor. I've been producing and selling these adapters since October of 2023, and since then I've sold over 250 of them. When I got the H2D, I wanted to use it to batch print components of my adapters. I use program pauses to embed square nuts into my adapters, so the HUD was perfect for this print. It's extremely accurate, so it doesn't show pause lines like other printers might. And since it's a larger printer, I can print more parts per batch with my HUD than I can my x Carbon and P1S printers. But after printing several of these adapters on my HUD, I realized that there were reoccurring artifacts. You see, to assemble my adapters, I use several pieces of hardware. To mount the top plate to the rest of the adapter body, I use chamfered holes and flathead screws. The chamfered holes of the HUD prints have very poor overhangs and seams, even though the chamfer is only 45 degrees, an angle that most printers easily handle nowadays. I've never seen this artifact while using my X1 Carbon and P1S printers before, so this was definitely something that I wanted to investigate. This is when I began printing test models to check on the HUD's cooling performance. I figured this was happening because the HUD must have poorer cooling capabilities than the previous Bambi printers, and I wanted to make sure that this was a real problem and not just a fluke. Before I did anything, I actually dried the spool of Bamboo PLA Basic just to make sure that there was no moisture inside of the filament that could you know, worsen the overhang performance on all of my tests. If you're wondering why it shows purple filament, it's because I personally think that it shows artifacts and imperfections really well. And for consistency, I used the exact same spool throughout the entire video. I simply just moved it from AMS to AMS for each print on each printer. And this did end up lengthening uh, this video and the time it took to print all of these tests. So if you appreciate the effort that I put in to keep the results consistent, please consider subscribing to watch all of my future videos. Before we hop into actual prints, just wanna show you guys really quick the profiles that I'm using. So I'm using the Bamboo PLA Basic profile, just a system preset with no edits. And this is for all the prints that you see in purple. And then for the layer height, I'm using the 0.2 millimeter standard system preset, and there's also no edits to that. Now, I do want to show you the comparison between the H2D and x Carbon presets because they are slightly different. And uh, the differences can definitely make an effect on overhangs. So uh, sparse infill speeds and some of the other speeds are slightly different. And then um, obviously the travel speed is higher for the H2D with its upgraded mechanics. Now here's the interesting part. For Bamboo PLA Basic profiles, the X1 Carbon has a 70 auxiliary fan speed and then 75 for the H2D. And then the actual part cooling fan speeds are also different. So X1 Carbon has 100%, whereas the H2D has 80 and 60. So definitely keep that in mind throughout this test. Uh, because the fan speeds can be tuned in a little bit more. And I do actually talk about that later as well. And then obviously nozzle temperatures are expected to be the same, and they are here. And the acceleration is different. Because of the bigger and heavier tool head, uh, it just doesn't have as fast of an acceleration on the H2D. But once again, the speeds are higher because of the improved mechanics. All right, so here we have the tolerance test that I printed with tons of infill patterns also has the like surface texture as well. This is a overall like a really cool print. Um, but all we really care about for the most part is the bench sheet, the overhang and the bridging. So as you can see, this is the H2D one. And that is what the bench sheet looks like pretty clean as expected overhang and 
arch looks really good right there. Sorry, I had to fix my focus really quick. That's this side. Now, check out the overhang tower. So at about 50 degrees or so, man, that thing just started to suffer. I don't know what happened here, but it does not look very good. And then those are the bridges as well. Did pretty good on the bridging actually, not too bad. So H2D, and here's the X1 carbon for comparison. I can tell you right now that the benchy, the, the whole of the benchy, the front side of the benchy right here is not as clean as the H2D. So the H2D did better there. Arches look good. But then look at the overhang. So the overhang looks much better on the X1 carbon at around 50 degrees than the H2D did. Also the bridging, is either as good or a little bit better with the X1 carbon. So yeah, that's that test. Okay, up next we have these temp towers. We'll do the same thing again and start with the H2D. And this is also a pretty cool test. You can see it goes all the way up to 70 degrees from 20. And that's what 20 looks like. And then all the way up to 70 degrees. The H2D destroyed this test. Like it just destroyed it. I mean, look at that. Even at 70 degrees, it was killing this test. So I thought this was really kind of interesting to see the previous result and then this result. Now let's compare the X1 carbon. Once again, 70 to 20. There's 20, yada, yada, yada. And then look at 70 degrees on the X1 carbon on this test. The H2D clearly outperformed the X1 carbon in this test and in this print. Wild wild stuff. So up next we have another overhang test here and once again we'll start with the H2D. So you can check out the bridging. I mean these are super long bridges so I mean I don't expect any printer to, to nail this really but if you check out these overhangs. I mean once again like that's not bad and that's 70 degrees again and like sure there's a little bit of artifacting right there but I mean overall for a 70 degree overhang that looks really good. And then if we compare the X1 carbon I would say the X1 carbon did worse here as well. So you can see there's way more artifacting here. This surface is arguably as clean or cleaner, but the artifacting on the outside here looks a lot worse. So, And then also the bridging performance is better on the X1 carbon at these lengths. So yeah, pretty interesting. Okay, and then up next, I've got these cool lattice cubes that I've found. And we'll start with the H2D again. So really we're looking, so this is gonna be kind of hard because this thing is upside down. We're just kind of looking like in here, checking out these overhangs. And like, it's kind of hard to see. As you can see there's a little bit of artifacting right there. But I mean, overall, like the print quality looks great. You can see some more artifacting right there on the inside. But in terms of like a, an overhang test, this isn't the toughest test. I just wanted to print out something, you know, with some pretty like decent overhangs. You can see this is how it prints out. And some pretty decent overhangs on this guy. And I want to show you what kind of quality you get with the H2D and stuff like this. So really, really good. X1 carbon, right off the bat, like just not as good. So you can see the overhang is there. It's kind of hard to show you guys, but overall I would say for this print, the H2D once again, like did better than the X1 carbon, which is just super interesting to me. I don't know what's going on. So I realized at this point that all of the test prints that I have printed didn't really match the geometry of the parts that I noticed this issue with in the first place. The chamfered holes are more circular and cone shaped compared to the more squared off geometry on the test prints. And I felt that that was probably affecting the results that I was seeing. For those of you that don't already know, the geometry of your parts can greatly affect how cooling performs on each printer. And this can be for various reasons. That being said, I thought that designing some prints that would better match the geometry of my adapters would be a good idea to really test the issue in this scenario. Because as you've seen so far, these tests didn't really show any major differences between the X1 Carbon and H2D. Here's where it gets a little more interesting. Okay, so here's when I decided to design my own parts that better matched the chamfers on my adapter here. And so I designed these little cones, really simple. And I'll kind of go through it with you guys quickly here. So this is, we'll go like this. We'll go white first and then we'll go to the purple. So I wanted to print the same material that I use for my adapters just to see if this was a material related issue. And this is how this one turned out. I understand this isn't gonna be super easy to see because this is white. This is why I didn't pick 
this filament for the whole test. But I mean, I think you guys could probably make that out. It doesn't look great. Like you can see stringing in there. It just does not look good. And this is the H2D printing out, you know, these cones. And it just does not look great. Let's look at the X1 carbon in comparison. The X1 carbon is way cleaner. This, these sides are flatter, I guess you could say. There's no stringing on the inside and the seam looks better. So the X1 carbon beat the H2D in this test. And then I'll show you purple as well. So you can see the artifacts better. So here's purple. That's what the top of the cone looks like. I mean, if I got that off of any printer, like I just would not be really that happy with that because the surface just looks really poor. Like look at the seams right there. It just does not look good. And then the underside, you can also see just not really the prettiest print. Seam does not look good either. So I thought this was really interesting. Here's the X1 carbon, much better outer surface. As you can see, there's a little bit of ring right there, but that's not what we're looking for. At the top of that cone, also just much better on the inside. What the heck? Guys, what the heck? So then I decided to extend this cone up. And then for this print, I bumped up the cooling to 100%. And then I bumped up the layer time to 10 seconds. And this is the result that I got in the HDD. And it looks a million times better. Really, really clean outer contours, probably even better than the X1 Carbon. And the inside looks beautiful as well. So those are the results that I got with my prints. Now, that being said, I also did 100% and 10 seconds on these adapters. And why am I still getting terrible like chamfer overhangs in there? I don't, I don't understand what's going on. I don't know if you guys are catching that, but just all of these sections in here just look really bad. And when I go to assemble these things and I put my flathead screws in there, it just, it's not the same fit that I can get with the X1 Carbon ones. I'm trying to get some good shots of this for you guys so you can see it really up close. I'll show you the X1 Carbon for comparison here at the end. I'm like, just look at that. You can instantly see how good those chamfers look in comparison. That one's not great, but like these ones, beautiful. So what the heck, why am I not getting that? on my H2D. This is the same film, guys, the same roll. I passed it back and forth between each printer. It's not moisture. It's definitely just the geometry. It seems like depending on the geometry you're printing, you're gonna get different results with overhangs and cooling. And I'm sure it's probably a result of the tool head on the H2D, the new tool head. So anyways. So what do you guys think of my tests? And what do you think of the results? I do find it very interesting that the tests I downloaded didn't show a huge difference between the X1 Carbon and H2D. And even after all of this, I still haven't really fixed the issue with my H2D. And at this point, I think that I'll just use my X1 Carbon and P1Ss for these adapters. Don't get me wrong, the H2D puts out some amazing quality prints, but it seems like for this scenario, my X1 Carbon is just the better choice. If any of you know what the issue may be, please share in the comments down below. I'm sure that if I ran into this problem, others might as well. And if you know the solution, you will not only be helping me, but anyone else who runs into this issue while printing with their H2D. I definitely learned much more about overhangs in the process of making this video, so I hope that you were able to learn something as well. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss my next video. I've got much more cool tests planned, and you definitely don't want to miss them. All right, this has been Sam with Muxlo Makes. Thank you so much for watching.